Hello, beautiful friends. Happy 2023. This is the very first update that I'm doing in the brand new year. And so I thought it would be the perfect time to go ahead and start a brand new vlog. Technically, this was supposed to be the start of the second week of the bi-weekly reading vlogs that I typically do. But I think that I've made the decision that if I'm going to vlog, regardless of how uneventful the vlogs may be, I'm going to switch back to weekly reading vlogs. So there may not be as much content in those vlogs. There may be very little B-roll and maybe even very little reading updates. So they could be very short, but I've just found that bi-weekly reading vlogs, even though in some ways it's easier because I don't have to worry about updating as often because there's going to be two weeks worth of content. It's also a little bit harder to just like keep track of everything. I find that I lose track of what I've actually updated y'all on and things like that. And I have to try to keep track of what's supposed to go on the vlog, what's not supposed to go on the vlog and make sure it's all updated to the computer and things like that. So I really want to stick with a three video a week schedule if I can manage it. But I think the only way that I'm going to be able to manage that is if every Sunday there is a vlog going up and not formal content. You'll just have to let me know what you think. I know that a lot of people want an even mixture of b-roll and reading updates, but you know, sometimes it's just a mundane week and all I'm doing is working and there's going to be nothing but reading updates, but it is what it is. With all that being said, there's likely going to be a little bit of... <laughs> Do you guys hear that? <laughs> That is a cat toy that we got for our cats for Christmas. And every single time I hear it, I giggle because it sounds like a bird laughing maniacally. And it annoys my husband to no end, but I just get such a kick out of it. So if you can hear that, I'm sorry, Archie is playing with it right now. But anyway, I'm actually sitting here at my new desk. I invested in an L-shaped desk that came with a lateral filing cabinet because I was just running out of space in my home office. And we have this space here that's technically supposed to be used as like a dining room, but we don't have a table. And for the past couple of years, it's just been been used for like my crafting station or when I was working remotely that's where I was working was in this space and so we just went ahead and used it for my like official workspace in terms of a desk and stuff and my husband just built me my own like desktop computer from scratch like he got all the parts and stuff and built it for me that way I have a better way to edit my videos and if uh, you can see like my plant in the corner there with the foil the reason why we have foil on it is because my cats will literally go in there and play in the plant if there's no foil in there so that's why there's foil on the plant but anyway I guess I should update you on what I'm starting the year with. I'm starting the year audibly reading The Last Housewife by Ashley Winstead. This is going to satisfy a prompt on my TBR game, but it's also going to satisfy one of the 23 and 23 books that I want to read. I did start it today. I'm about two hours into it and like the story is interesting so far, but it hasn't grabbed me and I'm concerned about that. I was like, oh my gosh, this book has been so hyped and I'm wondering if now there's so much pressure on me to love this book that I'm not going to love it. So we'll see. So in The Last Housewife, we are following our main character and I can't think of her name off the top of my head, but basically Basically, she is listening to this true crime podcast that she loves that is being hosted by an old childhood friend of hers that she hasn't seen or talked to in many, many years. But she finds out that one of her best friends from college, whom she also hasn't seen or spoken to in many years, has recently died and everybody's thinking that it's suicide. But the podcast host, Jamie, does not think it was suicide. He thinks that there is something more going on. And so he has put out a plea to our main characters. Like, if you can please contact me, this was your best friend back in college. I think there might be more going on. And so now we're at the point where they have reconnected and they're are looking into the death of Laurel. And I'm interested to see what they uncover. I believe it has to do with the cult. I believe that some of these girls might've been involved in a cult. I'm not entirely sure that's just what I've heard. So I still have a long way to go in the book. I'm hoping that I get a little bit more invested. To be honest, I think the only reason why I'm not invested is just simply because I've been distracted a lot of the day and just working on other things. And because I felt so much pressure, you know, like, what are you going to start the year with? You know, it's a brand new year. What's the very first book that you're going to pick up? And all of a sudden I'm picking up this very hyped and beloved book. So... Y'all, she is sitting on my laptop. This is why there's a key missing on my laptop. She just is so attracted to my laptop and she has always been since she was a little, little itty bitty baby. Hold on one second. Sorry, I had to get her off because she was pushing all kinds of buttons. I also decided to go ahead and start Ninth House as well, but I am listening and reading that at the same time because I can just tell that there's going to be a lot of information. And indeed, I only listened to 30 pages of it today and there's still a lot that I have to keep track of. I don't have a solid idea of what it's about because the first 30 pages, there's a lot of information thrown at you as though you're already supposed to kind of understand what is going on and I'm I'm sure that more of that gets explained as you go, but you're following Galaxy Alex Stern. And I believe she works for this organization that supervises the secret societies of Yale. And there is magic involved in these societies from what I'm understanding. And I believe Alex can see ghosts. And that's one of the reasons why she was recruited to this organization in the first place. I don't know anything more than that. I don't know the larger picture. I don't know about how she was recruited, why she was recruited. I don't know more about the org. I don't know literally anything that 
what I told you is just what I know, but I really, really, really enjoyed the first 30 pages. Like I started it and I was hooked and I'm very glad that I'm reading it with my eyeballs as well as listening and I'm able to more fully absorb everything that I'm reading. So I'm very, very excited to continue with that one. So I'm very thankful because I was a little bit nervous. I've heard really mixed reviews on it, but I liked Lee Bardugo's young adult and I wanted to see what she could do with adult and so far I'm not disappointed so I hope that it continues in that fashion. So so far a strong start to the year. I'm going to try to read more of The Last Housewife tomorrow and get a little bit more connected to the story before I have to go back to work and all the chaos of life starts again. Tomorrow is my very last day off before heading back in from winter break. So and so I will check back in when I have more of an update but I hope that you all had a very wonderful and blessed new year. I hope that you had a great and safe time and then I really hope that 2023 is just amazing to you. And I really hope that you continue to join me and engage with me over the coming year and that I'm able to bring like consistent content. And you know, as always, if there's something that you ever want to see from me, please feel free to like leave that down below. I'm always interested in hearing what you might want to see. But anyway, y'all, my dogs are whining in the background. I don't know if you can hear them, but they've been whining like this whole time because they want to go for a W-A-L-K. So I think it's time to do that. So I'll talk to you later. <laughs>
finds this cult because she had personal experiences with this guy in college. And that was a whole nother situation. So she's into it now. Like she wants to find out what's happening. So we're getting to this point where we're finding a little bit more about what Laurel could have been into, what could have led to her death. It's interesting. Like I said, I'm still not 100% sure I understand what's happening. And it's definitely not something that I can relate to, but it is interesting. So I should finish it today and I'll give you more of my thoughts at the very end of it. Hey y'all, sorry, I just got out of the shower, but I wanted to take this quiet moment while my husband is out playing D&D to actually give you an update because I have been trying to update you for like the past 36 hours. I have thought about y'all often, but there just never seems to be a great time for me to sit down and film. Luckily, my husband, like I said, is at D&D tonight, so I have some quiet time, but the lighting is not great. And, you know, I'm looking like a hot mess. If you thought 2023 was going to be the year where I showed up, put together in my vlogs, you were sorely mistaken. Archie is in the blinds. Hold on, let me see if I can show you. So let's update because not only did I finish The Last Housewife, but I also am currently a decent chunk into Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Seven. So I finished The Last Housewife and I gave it a four stars. Objectively, I think my reading experience was more of a three, 3.5 just because I wasn't connecting to it like I thought that I would. And I was having trouble relating to the material within just based off of the messages that were being put out there by the cult. Now, I know I'm not supposed to like or agree with them. That's not the point of the story. And I know that people get brain and indoctrinated into cults every single day. Even super smart, intelligent people, this actually happens to them. This is a real phenomenon that happens. Despite the awareness of cults that are out there now, it still happens. But I was still having a lot of just trouble with the messages and actually believing that these characters were getting themselves involved in these situations. There were also some technical issues that I was having. Like, first of all, our main character, Shay, starts this book married. But at the very beginning of the story, her husband is away on business. Shay finds out that Laurel is dead. She ups and leaves for New York. She's living in Texas. She doesn't say anything to her husband about what's going on. And then while she's in New York, she has like this epiphany, you know, she never really wanted to be married to this guy. This isn't what she wants. And she basically breaks up with him over the phone. So this guy had absolutely no point or purpose in the entire story. And I have no idea why she couldn't have just been a single woman the entirety of the story, especially since, you know, of course, things kind of develop with Jamie, which on its own was a little bit frustrating because I didn't think that that needed to be there. I didn't think she and Jamie needed to spark up a relationship in the middle of a murder investigation. It just didn't feel like it fit just because they were childhood friends. You know, Ashley Winstead does try to convince you that they have chemistry and that they should be there, but it just felt a little bit out of place. I also thought that there was a lot of repetition happening here. So, you know, of course, Shay is trying to go undercover in this sex cult. And so she's constantly going to their functions. She's constantly ending up in these situations that are fairly dangerous and manages to escape, even though her disobeying the men in this cult by leaving or refusing their advances is completely against their messages and completely against their rules and yet she's still invited back and that just didn't feel realistic to me. Maybe she could get away with it once, possibly twice, but like four times, no, absolutely not. And again, it just kind of felt repetitive, but it was like the only way that Ashley Winstead felt that she could further progress the plot. I also thought that some of the transitions in this book were really clunky. Like she and Jamie would be talking and then she would be like, okay, let me tell you my story. And then they would start recording for the podcast. And a lot of what they were trying to record for the podcast was about Shay's background. And I honestly, just didn't care that much. I know that Ashley Winstead was doing this because she wanted you to understand Shay a little bit better. She wanted you to understand why Shay is the way that she is and why she craves the danger and the darkness and things of that nature. But for some reason, I just wasn't connecting with those parts. I was far more interested in like figuring out the mystery, figuring out what actually happened and what was going on with the cult. So there were a lot of technical issues that I had with the story and then the overall fact that I wasn't emotionally connected to it. But the last, I would say 20% of the book, I was far more invested. The Things were really ramping up. They were really escalating. And I ultimately really enjoyed how it ended. I really enjoyed Shay finally like finding her agency and finding her voice and her kind of taking out this vengeance, taking out her own justice. So because of that, I pushed it to a four stars. I will say that I do feel like really pressured to like this book just because of my experience with In My Dreams, I Hold a Knife and how much hype this book is getting and how much hype I put on this book itself. That's why I wanted to start the year with this book. And so I feel like it has to be a four stars. It just, it just has. To be. But what is shaping up to be a solid four stars, if not higher, is Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Seven. So this is basically a very character-driven story that follows the 30-year-long friendship of 
Sadie and Sam. So at the very start of the story, you're seeing Sam and Sadie reconnect. They are both, I think on like the subway line in, I think it's Massachusetts, and they both randomly run into each other. And it sounds like it's been a couple of years since they last saw each other. So they reconnect. And Sadie is a programmer. And so she gives Sam a copy of the game that she has written. And Sam falls in love with it. And he's like, I want to make a game with you, Sadie. And so they reconnect and they start building this game. And while they are making this game, you are seeing flashbacks to their past together, like how they met and how their friendship developed. You're seeing their individual histories as well when they were kids. You're seeing kind of what happened. There was like a six year gap in between when they became friends and then they stopped talking and then they reconnected and all of this good stuff. So it is definitely a very, very character driven narrative, but it is beautifully written. I have never read Gabrielle Zevin before. I have seen her books floating around, but there was never one that really made me want to pick up her books until Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow came out. It sounded like something that was just up my alley and it's been getting a lot of praise. And I'm so glad that I picked it up because I am very much enjoying Gabrielle Zevin's writing style. So like I said, this is a very solid book. In my opinion, it is fantastically written. I'm very much enjoying Gabrielle Zevin's writing style, her prose. It's almost like it could be on the bordery of flowery, but it's not there yet. I feel like it's much more accessible than flowery prose tends to be. And that's the reading update, folks. Really nothing else is going on this week. Today is Thursday. I still have to work tomorrow. Robert and I are just going to be running some errands this weekend. And like, really, that's it. There is nothing going on. Anyway, I'm going to go try to get some things done. I have to walk the doggos by myself because Robert is gone. So I'm going to get that done and then try to get some more listening done of tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. I'll check in with you later. <music> Happy Saturday. I just got done at Target and I'm headed home to do a couple of things around the house before we head back out for some grocery shopping, but I wanted to come on and close out this vlog so that I could actually finish editing it and get it uploaded because it's supposed to go up tomorrow. But I just wanted to give a quick update regarding tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow because that is currently the only progress that I've made. I haven't made any further progress in Ninth House just because, as y'all know, it is often hard for me to take the time to sit down and read something, even though I'm really, really enjoying it. There's always something else that I need to be doing. I'm hoping to make some more progress in it this weekend if I I can. I know there are some reading sprints happening this weekend and I might try to get involved in some of them to see if I can make some progress and like do absolutely nothing else but read Ninth House. But I don't really have much more to say with regard to tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow because like I said it is really just a book following a very long friendship between Sadie and Sam and all of the complications that ensue. Another really big aspect of this book that is really almost a character unto itself is gaming and game making and things of that nature. I'm learning a lot about the gaming world and what it could possibly take to make a game. I can't speak to Gabrielle Zevin's personal experience with gaming or making games or anything like that, but she seems very knowledgeable on the subject. And even though gaming is not really something that I am interested in or partake in, I'm still finding that whole aspect of the book to be very, very fascinating. So this is almost as much focused on gaming as it is on Sam and Sadie. Now we're at the point where Sam and Sadie are in their mid to late 20s. They have now created many successful games together. They have a company that is worth probably millions of dollars at this point. They're definitely having some complications in their friendships. They are not really as close as they once were at all. In fact, at this point in the book, they're primarily colleagues and they're not even good colleagues because they are fighting all the time. Sadie has also just entered into a serious relationship with their colleague and producer and Sam is not necessarily taking it well so that's adding to the fraughtness in their relationship even though he and Sadie have never had a romantic relationship it is obvious that he loves her and cares for her deeply and in some ways it could be romantic love even though they kind of know that they're not really meant to be together so this is definitely a love story but it is not a conventional love story I have no idea where it is headed I don't know if it's going to end up being a romantic story between Sam and Sadie but overall it really is just about 
their friendship and the complications that ensue within a friendship that long. So I am still very, very much enjoying it. My only criticism at this point is just the fact that it is pretty long of a story. Now, obviously, since their friendship is long, you would expect the book to be long, but it's just like, this is like a 13 plus hour audiobook. So it is definitely taking me a lot longer to get through. And because it is so character driven and there is very little plot overall, it can kind of seem slow at times, but I'm still very much enjoying being immersed in the world, very much getting to know Sadie and Sam on a very intimate level. And I honestly think about these characters when I'm not reading the book. So it's a very pleasant reading experience and I kind of enjoy taking my time. I'm trying to take my time a lot more with these books because I feel like if I don't, I feel like if I continue to rush through books or put pressure on myself to rush through books that I'm going to definitely go into my annual slump or possibly even go into my annual slump sooner than I normally would. So I'm just trying to really take it easy on myself, especially because I still have all of the normal adulting things that I have to do, plus now editing and trying to get three videos uploaded every single week, which definitely does take time. So, so far it's been a solid reading experience with Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Ninth House. And like I said, I really look forward to hopefully making more progress in Ninth House later today, hopefully when I've finished like editing this vlog and we've done our grocery shopping and things like that. But that's it. I think that I'm going to go ahead and close out the vlog here and start up another one tomorrow. So I will check back in with you tomorrow. Music